Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, I was still waiting for a couple of parts to show up. Uh, waiting for the timing cover seal and the windage tray. That's not going to be here until Monday, but we're going to try to get done what we can get done. Um, in the last video, we sit there and tore everything apart, looked everything over. Everything looked good, looked great, especially for 180,000 miles. So after that, I decided to go ahead and get the block stripped down and get it painted. And then cleaned all the pistons up. Ethan decided to get all the corrosion off the motor mounts. And he almost came to the point, he almost polished them with that wheel. Uh, we got the head cleaned up on this one. I'm getting ready to work on another one. Um, got all the corrosion and the dullness off the head as well. So right now, I just got the head sitting in place. I haven't torqued nothing down yet. Um, Ethan did a good job as far as trying to clean all the ports out because they were all gummed up with oil and stuff, which these Gen 3s are bad about doing. Um, we did all the exhaust ports and everything. So they're cleaning up really good. Um, got the can back in, of course. Got the lifters back in. Got them all re-oiled re up with assembly lube. Um, so that's all back in there uh, right now. Get stuff out of my way here. Probably gonna put the timing chain and stuff in today. That there. And then of course, Ethan ordered new motor mounts. And went in and got new studs because these studs are bad about rusting out. And I'm digging these new mounts. They're kind of like a replacement mount to the original version, but they're also on the parts thing as police mounts. And they work for the 6.1 and the 5.7. So we got those ordered. Um, he actually went online and got them through uh, Anchor. And they were a hell of a lot cheaper. Uh, AutoZone wanted like, ungodly amount i think it was 145 dollars for the mounts and he was able to get both mounts for way under that um he went ahead and got a new training mount to go as well it was a kit so all that's all done um he's been doing some more cleaning i'm over here getting ready to clean up another set of heads I'm basically going to just get all the carbon and stuff out, get it cleaned up. And this is what I was talking about. After time, I mean, they just get really dull and start getting the little white dots. And they're bad about doing that. So just kind of give you an idea of the difference, you know, how dull all this is. So really did some cleaning on this. So big difference. Uh, we went ahead and put a coating of clear coat over this. It's high temp. And all we're wanting to do is keep it from dulling out like it did before. So that one should do pretty good. But I'm going to get started on the head. And Ethan, we got the car pushed outside. I had to close the door because the sun was coming in real bad. He is getting ready to clean the engine bay up. There's the man himself. So you know him, Mr. Clean. So he's gonna go in here, degrease everything, get everything situated, degrease, signed up. He's been in the process of relooming the wiring harness. And we had to replace the wire going to the starter. I had like a fusible link set up on it and then got a little bit of heat from the header. Just a little bit. So we're thinking that was part of the problem with the battery drain. So we got that replaced. So I'm going to go back inside, start cleaning this head up, get it washed out, and then put new valve seals on it. And just do what we can do and do when we get done until everything shows up. So basically all I'm doing is going to clean all this out. Yes, I use a wire wheel. I'm not worried about, oh my God, using a wire wheel on them. I'm not doing it that hard. I've done it many times, 
But I just like painting all this stuff out before we put it back in. The bad thing is Sorry about all the noise outside, he's vacuuming all the dirt out. So basically I'm doing is cleaning all the carbon and stuff out of it. So I'm gonna do it on the other three here. And then we'll get to cleaning the head itself. And then we'll take it outside, wash her up, let her dry out, put the new valve seals in. All right, guys, it's the next day. Uh, we had to leave yesterday. Uh, we had a dinner reservations for Ethan's birthday. So we went and did that. It's the next morning now. Um, basically got most of the stuff cleaned off off the head I want to get cleaned off. We got all the carbon buildup out of the cylinders. Went ahead and got all the oxidation off the heads. Got those all buffed out. And like I said before, once I get done with all this, I am going to put a little bit of clear coat over this. It's high temp. Um, I'm using the VHT engine enamel uh, gloss clear. And basically what it's going to do is just keep the keep it from putting up. Because you know, sometimes on these, after a while, you see like little white dots and stuff like that on it. And this is kind of going to prevent that from happening. It's going to give it a, co a coating. So that's what we're going to use. So yeah, this, all I gotta do now with this is do a degreasing on it. We wanna clean these intake ports up. Just get all the trash out of it, all the old oil out of it. And then Ethan got done more or less yesterday uh, cleaning the engine bay. He still got a little bit more stuff to do, but looking a lot better. This is more wire looming. And uh, so now we gotta get the transmission jack back up on blocks so he can get the rest of the wiring back here and get all that done. Ed, we're still waiting on a couple of gaskets for this. So as soon as those come in, we can finish putting it together. So let me go outside, get this degreased. And then a lot of people have asked about my parts cleaner, why I've been using it except for to hold stuff on top. I gotta do a major cleaning in that parts cleaner. There's a bunch of sludge in it in the bottom now, so I need to clean it all out, clean the tank out, pressure wash it, and go ahead and put new solvent in it. So that's why I haven't been using it. So I'll be doing out here shortly, especially with all the work I'm getting ready to do on the Lark. But let me get that stuff cleaned up. We'll get back inside and we'll put the new valve seals in and just kind of do what we can do until the rest of the stuff gets here. All right, I just got finished degreasing. Uh, brought it back inside. A lot cleaner now, especially on the intake ports. So we're gonna let this dry for a little bit. And then I'll start putting the new valve seals in it. Now, the other thing is, the reason why I wanted to clean up all the oil and stuff out of the intake ports. Uh, the Gen 3 Hemis uh, with their PCV system, um, not the greatest in the world i mean it brings it back through puts it back through the intake but over time it builds oil up and that's why you see a lot of guys using catch cans uh, we're going to be using catch can on this uh, just trying to get most of it out of the intake area try to keep the motor clean um, so that's why we're going to use it and uh but right now i'm gonna go inside and get changed because things are gonna get a little dirty and get back out here on it and i got a couple other things i gotta do today i gotta do an oil change on the hot odyssey I'm getting ready to put it up for sale and my previous videos know if i was going to keep it or flip it but i saw i was gonna go ahead and flip it uh, did a lot of stuff to it a lot of it didn't really cost any money it was just 
stuff that needed to be done maintenance wise um, i did get two new tires for the back i am going to put rear brakes on it so i'm going to do that today as well and i also need to do oil change on the jeep commander so it's gonna be a busy day here at the garage but as soon as ethan gets up gets out here um get helping with start doing what we can do to get things back together and like i said before he's gonna finish uh putting new wire loom and everything on here um just kind of freshen it up i mean because over time the, the loom just breaks apart and yes i know there's different products out there you could use but he's had to go back with the regular plastic loom for now but just making everything nice and tidy So I think he's got to work on this part here, that part over there. Uh, he's going to redo all of this. And uh, so that's his project for the day, more or less. But I get a lot of y'all asking, you know, y'all sure pull motors out just to do a regasket. Some of them, yeah, you can do inside the vehicle uh, with us. Uh, even though this one just had a rear main leak seal leaking on it but then we found out tearing it apart the intake gasket was bad and this is one of the reasons why we went ahead and just pulled it out we wanted to check the motor out inside and out gives us a chance to do the things that he's wanting to do over here as far as cleaning the engine bay up uh gives us a chance also to clean the engine and stuff up and then of course going in through the heads and stuff there was really needing some new valve seals. So, and then I've also had to ask people, you know, put a cam in it while you're in there. There is gonna be plans for this motor um, down the road, which is gonna require tearing it back down, um, probably changing pistons out, rods out, stuff like that. Or we might just find another 6-1 to build from the ground up for everything he wants to do with it. Yeah, but for now, he wants to be able to drive this thing again. He missed driving it. And this way here, we're just basically just refreshing the motor up. All new gaskets, stuff like that. And so he can go back out and enjoy this thing, race with it a little bit, whatever he wants to do with it. And then once we get money saved up to start doing the add-ons and the bolt-ons he's wanting to do, you know, then that's when we'll make the decision of, do we get another 6-1 to build? Because he really wants to do the eagle head deal and i've had some people ask about that um you can go online there's a lot of information on the six one heads uh the five seven pre eagle heads and the oh nine and up eagle heads as far as the flows and stuff goes um the eagle heads actually outflow the six ones by 15 cfm um just in case anybody wants to know but I, like i said there's a lot of information online about these heads um, why a lot of people like doing the Eagle swaps and um, maybe down the road here we'll reiterate again on the Eagle swap stuff because there has been a lot of questions and but there are some videos on here already kind of outline the deal with the Eagle swaps and what you can use what's interchangeable what's not interchangeable um, so you can kind of look at that but like I said we'll do something later on down the road more in depth and uh so that way i can give you all a better idea because a lot of times when i do these videos guys i don't script anything out um i just start filming and start talking and uh, so when we get more in depth than that i want to make sure my research is correct to explain to y'all to be more helpful and beneficial to y'all and i mean these things are fun things to build and you learn something every day on these things what you can do with them am i an expert on the gen 3s no do i love working on them yes and the more i work on them the more i get to know them the more things i can find out what i can do with them what i can't do with them and um and that's how you learn but other than that we're gonna get back on it like i said i'm gonna change and some dirty some clothes i can get greased up on don't have to worry about and get back out here and get back on it and so let's go ahead and change out these valve seals I love this tool I got a while back. It's definitely been worth the money.
because for the longest time I just I had another fast spring remover tool that I kind of modified to do this but nothing beats this I love it now it's fairly inexpensive now the prices have gone down quite a bit when they first came out it was almost like a hundred and something almost two hundred dollars and I found this one change the setting on that I think it was like seventy dollars or something like that all together but I love this thing I wish that you know if the prices were low back then, I would probably would have bought them back then. So I'm gonna slowly bring the spring down on it. So now I have to get the keepers out. Of course, I use my little trusty magnetic thing here to keep them from losing them. Or like that, dropping stuff. So I do these one at a time, so that way I put the right spring back in the right area. All right, got that out of the way. And then I'll take a rag, wipe every, all any excess oil that was down there before you want to have a flat surface and then usually I can come in get my other ones here and usually they pop out pretty easy for the most part but you see there how loose that's in there they're, they're wore out go in here and clean the rest of the oil out of it Now these are kind of what's called a top hat style. Um, usually if you do aftermarket stuff, they kind of went to the later model type out seals where it doesn't have top hat. But, but then after that, sometimes you have to get the shins for the springs because your springs are calculated with the flat part of the top hat for, in most cases. And this kind of push down on them a little bit and then put another spring back in. Where'd my little sleeve go? Make sure it's lined up. A lot of people put a little bit of oil or assembly lube on the keepers to kind of keep them in place. It still has a little bit of residual oil left in it or on them. Slowly bring it back up. That one popped out on me. That's why I said slowly. And basically, that's it on these. Next 
it centered up. <laughs> and then underneath there, I got a rag about I'm putting underneath it to hold the valve in place so it doesn't drop all the way out. And so basically just kind of repeat process. So anyway, when these slide down, you got a driver part inside, <coughs> kind of slides over the valve guide. And sometimes you gotta sit there once you get them in there and get like a socket or something to fit over this, kind of lightly tap them in where they bottom out once they're seated. Um, sometimes you gotta do that, sometimes you don't. But like I said, I'm gonna sit there and finish the rest of these up and we'll get it they had mounted back up on the motor. All right, all the valve seals are in. All right, got the head gasket on. Let's go ahead and get this head on. Now for now, I'm just snugging them down. I'm not gonna torque them yet. And these head bolts from Phil Pro are already been oiled down, so there's oil on the back of the washers. Okay, y'all hit up on is it going to torque down right I'm set my gun on a low setting here because all I'm going to do is just make contact with the head and that's it. So now I'm going to sit there and put the timing chain on. Just setting everything in place for now. Now sometimes, if you don't have a good memory, you can take pictures, how you took it apart, or you can sit and put them in little baggies uh, where each bolt goes to. Ethan likes to do this. Me, not so much. Maybe I should sometimes, but well, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to put just a little bit of Loctite on this so they don't back out. I mean, once they're torqued properly, they shouldn't. But just a little bit of force doesn't hurt.
There we go. So on these, they have, they have little indicators on chain. There's like be a, a darker part and the outer part of the lane. On this one, there's one on top, two on the bottom. I've already sit here and put everything top dead center. In. It tightens everything up. Like I said, I'll go back and I'll torque the cam bolt down. But always double check. Make sure you're on the top dead center. Pistons all the way up to the top as far as it can go without coming back down. Make sure your cam's lined up. Because a lot of people will do these, put them back together and forget. And they're 180 out. Or I'll cup teeth and want to know why it's not firing up. So, like I said, there's an indicator here on the side of the chain. There's two here at the bottom. Let's go ahead and give you all a closer look. So, as you can see here, you want to appear with the indicator. There we go. Get two there at the bottom. So now we know we're in time with the cam and the crank. Now let me see if I can go grab the oil pump and we'll get that installed. And now before I put the oil pump on, we got the Billings 10 342 pump. <laughs> it comes with extra springs for it. Now when you get it from them, nine times out of 10, it's already set up with the spring for the 5.7. Uh, since we're doing the 6-1, it gives you different colors. So here on this, it says use the optional purple 65 PSI pressure release spring for the 6-1. So that's the one we're going to be using. It comes with a 50 PSI sock spring in it for the 5-7. Now you can up the pressure on the 5-7 one by adding the optional, optional red spring, which puts it up to 60 PSI. So now we're going to change that spring out to the purple one and then we'll get it installed on the motor. Let's get it installed.
Now, once we get our gasket in for the timing cover, I will leave the chain down, let it soak, so that way it's not getting a dry hit when we turn it over. And uh, I'll take it from there. But other than that, guys, this is going to be it for today on this because I need to get on the Honda and get on the Commander with the oil changes. So, in the next video, we'll finish putting this together and see about getting this thing back into the car. But other than that, guys, y'all have a good one, a safe one, and we'll see you down the road.